So what's going on my dedicated bros? It's Sumi Luigi Kid and I hope you are all excited for this because the premiere is about to start as you can see here. All boys and girls. Less than two minutes and we finally get to see the PlayStation 5. They reveal everything. I hope they also reveal the design and the specs, what it can do. Pretty much everything that we gamers are hungry for. I just stopped playing Call of Duty Warzone to make a short little break to watch this, streaming it together with you. I'm wearing the perfect shirt for this occasion, a PlayStation shirt, and in a bit, we finally get to see the next generations of consoles. Boys! I see there are many dedicated bros here already in the chat. Now, shit's about to get real. Get your friends into the stream and smash the like button. Hoopa Clan, thank you so much for the five dollar donation. It really means the world to me. Hey man, I've been watching you since 2013. I've been watching since uh, I remember all the EXE games you played. Always a dedicated bro. You are amazing, bro. You are awesome. Thank you for being such a great dedicated bro for a very very long time already. Damn, less than a minute, guys. If you haven't already, make sure to smash the like button, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give away a PlayStation 5 as soon as possible. So make sure to follow me on Instagram, it's at ReneLuigiKit, I'm gonna post it right now into the chat. Follow me on Instagram, this is where I'm definitely gonna do my giveaway when it's time. And more updates, more info soon. Oh boy, let's go! 10 more seconds, 9, 7, 6, 5, it's happening guys, we're about to, we're about to see it, alright, I want to see the design, smash the like button for it, here we go! Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the, the talk that we had Bro. Uh, planned for GDC, Oh. Um, but we do have some super exciting news about PS5. Uh, and I thought they wanted to cancel this <laughs> presentation. <laughs> and the one and only Mark Cerny. Without further ado, over to you, Mark. Here Thank we you, go. They wrote the PS5. It's There'll happening. Lots of chances later on this year to look at the PlayStation 5 games. Today, I want to talk a bit about our goals for the PlayStation 5 hardware and how they influenced the development of the console. I think you all know I'm a so big much? believer in console generations. Once every five or that six the or years, a console Adrian arrives thank you for becoming a member. Capabilities. There's a lot of learning by the game developers, hopefully Peter not Strick, too thank overwhelming, you so much. and soon there's games that can never have been created Euro the nation. Now, it used to be that as a console designer, you'd somehow intuit what would be the best set of capabilities for the new console, and then build it in complete secrecy. For the PlayStation consoles, that period lasted through PlayStation 2. And why would we hear the others? Console, but also one that Out of alerts. quite a lot of heartache, as it was initially difficult Sorry, to develop games for. So, starting with PlayStation 4, we've taken a different approach, roughly centered around three principles. Listening to developers? The first of these is listening to the developers, which is to say that say? a lot of what we put into a console derives directly from the needs and aspirations of the game creators. Hey guys. We definitely do have some ideas of our own, but at the core of our philosophy for designing consoles is that game players are here for the fantastic games. Which is to say that game creators matter. Anything we can do say. to make life easier for the game creators or help them realize their dreams, we will do. So, about once every two years, I take a tour. Is that how industry. far? I go to how the much the coronavirus has already spread? It? Sit down and discuss how they're <laughs> doing with the current consoles and what they'd like to see in future consoles. This requires weeks on the road, as reaching the bulk of the game creators involves talking to well over 100 people at something like two dozen publishers and developers. And it is incredibly valuable. By the way, the feature most requested by the developers, that was an SSD, which we were very happy to put in the hardware. Great. A lot Raise of for the donation. solving was required. I'll be doing a deep dive on the SSD and surrounding systems Finally. later on in this talk. Like my PlayStation always it's runs out of uh, storage. It's generational leap while keeping the console sufficiently familiar go, to guys. developers. I think about this in terms of balancing evolution and revolution. 
Now, with PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, the target was a revolution each time with a brand new feature set. That was great in many ways, but time for the developers to get up and running got longer with each console. <laughs> People past, saying this is fake. I've this it's not fake. Prime. This is the official Sony Here's PlayStation. What I have for those three consoles. The official Sony to PlayStation clear, channel, bros. I'm not bros. talking about time to make a game. Developers will be ambitious, and it may take them six years or so to realize their vision. What I'm talking about is that dead time before graphics and other aspects of game development are up and running, and trying to minimize that. On the other hand, if we're trying to reduce that dead time to zero, that means the hardware architecture can't change at all. We're handcuffed. We need to judge for each feature what value it adds and whether it's worth the increase in developer time needed to support it. So with PlayStation 4, we were able to strike a pretty good balance between performance and familiarity. We got required learning back Still to one of my favorite one. consoles out there. With PS5, the GPU was definitely the area we felt the most tension. Super Yoshi World, this is actually real. A familiar programming model. Ultimately, I think we've ended up with something under a month of getting up to speed. That feels like we're striking about the right balance. I'll go into a bit more detail later today about our philosophy with the GPU and the specific feature set that resulted from it. It's also very important for us as the hardware team to find new dreams, by which I mean something dreams other than coming up for CPU PlayStation 5 GPU <laughs> performance and the amount of RAM. The increase in graphics performance over the past two decades has been astonishing, but there are other areas in which we can innovate and provide significant value to the game creators, and through them, the players. That's why the SSD was very much on our list of directions to explore, regardless of what came out of the conversations. If people say this is fake, they're stupid. Razor Ash, thank you in this for becoming a low-tier member. For audio. That's today's final topic. The push for vastly improved audio, and in particular 3D audio, isn't something that came out of the developer meetings. It's much more the case that we had a dream of what might be possible five years from now, and then worked out a number of steps we could take to set us on that path. So here again are the three principles. The first thing to developers, balance, evolution, revolution, finding your dreams, okay. drive the Easy. hardware design. Come on. To me, the SSD really is the key to the next generation. It's a, a game changer. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. As in, we know it's probably impossible, but can you put an SSD in it? That was a discussion we were also having internally. It was clear that the this presence real. of the hard drive real, my dedicated bros. 4 was having a positive impact. Swear to my mom's a lot life. of things <laughs> that would simply have been impossible at Blu-ray disc speeds were now possible. At the same time, though, in 2015 and 2016, when we were having these conversations, developers were already banging up against the limits of the hard drive. And a lot of developer time was being spent designing around slow load speeds. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. Oh, yeah. The how difficulty long? being that hard drives are neither particularly fast nor flexible. If all your data is in one block, which is frankly not very likely, you can load 50 to 100 megabytes a second, depending on where the data is located. How fast hardware. is the PS5 Let's though? Let's assume it's on the outer edge, which means loading a gigabyte takes 10 seconds. If you compress your game packages, you can fit more data on the Blu-ray disc and also effectively boost your hard drive read speed by the compression ratio. We support Zlib decompression on PlayStation 4 that gets you something like 50% yeah, more too. data on the disc and 50% higher effective read speed. Unfortunately, though, it's highly likely that your data is scattered around in various files on the hard drive, as well as sourced from multiple locations within those files. I just so noticed that my cam froze. Needed at 2 to 50-ish milliseconds each. My rule of thumb is that the hard drive is spending two-thirds of its time seeking it and only a third of its time actually it loading data. Putting all of that together, a gigabyte is very roughly 20 seconds to load from a hard drive. Now, a gigabyte is not much data. Games are using five or six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. Or to put that differently, as a player, you wait for the game to boot, wait for the game to load, wait for the level to reload. Guys, this every time is you real. Die, How many times I have to say this is the official PlayStation fast YouTube running. channel? And all of that leads Damn. to the dream. What if we could have not just an SSD? Why are people still not but believing a it? <laughs> fast SSD. If we could load five gigabytes a second from it, what would change? 
Now, SSDs are completely different from hard drives. They don't have seeks as such. Holy shit. If you have shit. a five gigabyte a second SSD, you can read data from a thousand different locations in that second. This is the Pretty target? Speed. If they've actually as come up with this, time to load that gigabyte. would be This is next gen insane. we're talking about. So memory is bigger. Instead, we should be asking how long to load two gigabytes. Wow. And the answer is about a quarter of What a that? Yeah, that's amazing. How fast is that? Magnitude, meaning very roughly 100 Gotta times go faster, fast. Which means at five gigabytes a wow. second for the SSD, the potential is that the game boots in a second. There are no load screens. The game just fades down while loading. That would be so awesome. Fuck them up. loading screens, Same guys. For a reload, you're immediately back in the action after you die. And fast travel becomes so fast, it's blink and you miss it. As game creators, fast travel, you know, one of fast travel, you can't go back to take a taken, break, like those sit on the toilet. No, are. you're just the right into the so action. Awesome. That we might even have to slow that transition down. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. But for me, this is not the primary reason to change from a hard drive to an SSD. The primary reason for an ultra-fast SSD is that it gives the game designer freedom. Or to what put that differently, with a hard drive, the 20 seconds that it takes to load a gigabyte can sabotage the game that the developer is trying to create. I think almost all of us in the room have experienced this, maybe in different ways. Say we're making an adventure game and we have two rich environments where we each want enough textures and models to fill memory. Which you can do as long as you have a long staircase, or an elevator fun. ride, or a windy corridor where you can ditch the old assets and then take 30 seconds or so to load the new assets. Having a 30 second elevator ride is a, a little extreme. More realistically, we'd probably chop the world into a number of smaller pieces and then do some calculations with sight lines and run speeds like we did for Haven City when we were making Jack 2. The game is 20 years old, but not much. Oh my god, it's already 20 years old and Jack 2 came out? Are there for real? Reason. There's a whole subset of level Same. design dedicated to this sort of work, but still, it's a giant distraction for a team that just wants to make their game. So when I talked about the dream so of an SSD, part are of getting the reason easy as well. five gigabyte a second target was to eliminate loads, but also part of the reason for that target was streaming. As in, what if the SSD is so fast that as the player is turning around, it's possible to load textures for everything behind the player in that split second. If wow. you figure that it takes half a second to turn, that's four gigabytes of compressed data you can load. That sounds about right for next gen. Anyway, back to the hard drive. Not only right, Another strategy that for sounds about effective awesome. reach speed is to make big sequential chunks of data. For example, we might group all the data together for each city block. That removes most of the seats. The only one that's excited the to see faster. the design. But there's a downside too which is that frequently used data is included in many chunks and therefore is on the hard drive many, many times. Marvel's Spider-Man uses this strategy, and though it works very well for increasing the streaming speed, there's a massive duplication as a result. Some of the objects like mailboxes or news racks are on the hard drive 400 times. What I'm describing here are things that cramp a creative director's style. Either level design gets a little bit boring in places, or the data is duplicated so many times that it no longer fits on the Blu-ray disc. And you end up with hard limits on the player's run speed or driving speed. The player can't go faster than the load speed from the hard Imagine playing Sonic can't go fast. And finally, I'm sure many well, no, he can finally go fast because the loading, loading the screen is also going fast. A long time to I want Sonic 06, action. please. That's As a remake, just part of a file has been changed. No more loading new screens. Data can be downloaded pretty quickly. But before the game boots Guys, up, a brand real. new file has to be constructed. New PlayStation. The changed portion. Verified. Otherwise, every change would add a seek or two. You have to keep Even showing so, that this is fake because people are too stupid to realize that this is actually real. To hitch once this isn't fake. Enough. With an SSD, though, no seeks. So no need to make brand new files with the changes incorporated into them which means no installs as you know them today. There's yet one more benefit, which is that system memory can be used much more efficiently. On PlayStation 4, game data on the hard drive feels very distant and difficult to use. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. That means a lot of the eight gigabytes of system memory is idle. It's just waiting there to be potentially used. 
Well, tension on only. PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast enough that when you realize you need a piece of data, you can just load it from the SSD and use it. There's no need to have lots of data parked in system memory waiting to potentially be used. A different way of saying that is that most of RAM is working on the game's behalf. This is one of the reasons that 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 feels right for PlayStation 5. The presence of the SSD I hate reduces the gaming right now. The chat is really disgusting. If this is real or fake, inside. how stupid are they? So if you watch this afterwards, the SSD. here's the all targets. Boot the game in a second. Damn it! No load screens. Design freedom, meaning no passages or long corridors. Imagine playing a game without any disc, loading more screens. More on the SSD, and finally. Those patch <gasps> yes! Go away. Yes! The reality. Finally! The I hated those patch installing system. shit. There's a lot of places. Oh, that's copy time. Oh my god. Between the SSD one Rainbow the Six update, one Call of Duty update took me two hours until I could, an SSD I could finally play it again. The speed of a standard hard drive. I probably see only double the ten load times faster. If that. Wow. For PlayStation Five. Our goal was not just Finally. that the SSD itself be a hundred times faster. Guys, it for that, that game load smash the like button, please. Would be a hundred times faster. So every single potential bottleneck needed to be addressed, and there are a lot of them. Let's look at check-in and what happens when its overhead gets a hundred times larger. Conceptually, check-in is a pretty simple process. Data is loaded into system memory from the hard drive or SSD. It's examined, a few values are tweaked to check it in, and then it's moved to its final location. At the SSD speeds we're talking about, that last part, moving the data, meaning copying it from one location to another, takes roughly an entire next-gen CPU core. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If all the overheads get 100 times larger, that will cripple the frame rate as soon as the player moves, and that massive stream of data starts coming off the SSD. So to solve all of that, we built a lot of custom hardware. Oh my gosh. Namely, a custom flash well, controller. They finally show us the, the designs of age. the controller, of the, of the console the flash as controller well. The in the SSD was designed for smooth and bottleneck-free operation, but also the with guys. <laughs> For example, there are six levels of priority when reading from the SSD. Priority is very important. You can imagine the player heading into some new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few gigabytes of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, an enemy is shot and has to speak a few dying words. Having multiple priority levels lets the audio for those dying words get loaded immediately. On one side, that flash controller connects to the actual flash dies that supply the storage. To it's so hard to understand what you're actually talking about if you are not a tech freak. <laughs> 12 channel interface. Eight channels wouldn't be enough. They can tell me whatever the they want that I would be like, oh yeah, awesome. Five and a half gigabytes a second. With a 12 channel interface, the most natural size that emerges. And to be honest, a Nintendo Direct is actually more entertaining than this thing. The key question but for us was, I was looking for it. I mean, it's tempting to add more, but Flash certainly doesn't come cheap, and we have a responsibility hey to our gaming audience to be cost-effective with regards to what we put in the console. Ultimately, we resolved this question by looking at the play patterns of a broad range of gamers. We examined the specific games that they were playing over the course of a weekend or a week or a month, and whether that set of games would fit properly on the SSD. We were able to establish that the friction caused by reinstalled or redownloads would be quite low. And so we locked in on that 825 gigabyte size while also preparing multiple strategies so that those who want more storage can add it. I'll go through the details in a moment. Great. Back to the flash controller. On the other side, it connects to our main custom chip via four lanes of Gen 4 PCIe. And inside the main custom chip is a pretty hefty unit dedicated to I.O. Before we talk about what that does, let's talk compression for a moment. PlayStation 4 Too much information. Zero compression format. We decided to it's use it crop. again on PlayStation 5, but on my 2017 tour of developers, I learned about a new format. Hi, Carlo. Welcome to stream. From Rad Game Tools. It's like Zlib's smarter cousin. Simple, uh, similar types Life of tales. algorithms, but about 10% better compression, which is pretty big. That means 10% more game on the UHD Blu-ray disc or on the SSD. Kraken had only been out for a year, but it was already becoming a de facto industry standard. Half of the teams I talked to were either using it or getting ready to evaluate it. 
So we hustled and built a custom decompressor into the hustle's dough, one capable of handling over five gigabytes of Kraken format input data a second. After decompression, that typically becomes eight or nine gigabytes. But the unit itself is capable of outputting as much as. Well, if you want a PlayStation Five giveaway, guys, if the honestly, data happen to compress particularly well. By the way, in terms of performance, that custom decompressor equates to nine of our Zen two cores. That's what it would take to decompress the crack and stream with a conventional CPU. There's a lot more in the custom I/O unit, including a dedicated DMA controller. The game can direct exactly where it wants to send the data coming off of the SSD. This equates to another Zen two core or two in terms of its copy performance. Its Welcome primary everyone. purpose is to remove check-in as a bottleneck. There's two dedicated I.O. coprocessors and a large RAM pool. These aren't Zen 2 cores. They are there principally to direct the variety of custom hardware around them. One of the coprocessors is dedicated to SSD I.O. This lets us bypass traditional file I.O. and its bottlenecks when reading from the SSD. The other is responsible for memory mapping, which I know doesn't sound like anything related to the SSD, but a lot of developers map and remap memory as part of file I.O., and this too can become a bottleneck. There are coherency engines to assist the coprocessors. Coherency comes up a lot in places. Probably the biggest coherency issue is stale data in the GPU caches. Flushing all of the GPU caches whenever the SSD is read is an unattractive option. It could really hurt the GPU performance. So we've implemented a gentler That's way of doing better. Things where the coherency engines inform the GPU of the overwritten address ranges, and custom scrubbers in several dozen GPU caches do pinpoint evictions of just those address ranges. The best thing is, as a game developer, when you read from the SSD, you don't need to know any of this. You don't even need to know that your data is compressed. You just indicate what data you'd like to read from your original uncompressed file and where you'd like to put it. And the whole process He's giving us way too much information, honestly. To you and at very high speed. Back to the dream. Thanks to all of that surrounding hardware, we finally get to the design. design. Really should translate into something like a hundred times games. faster I/O. Yeah, it's PS4. it's it's one hundred times faster and stuff. But no yeah, load screens and super fast streaming. That's what you already said, dollars. bro. Having said that, expandability of our SSD is going to be quite important. Flash is costly, and you may very well want to add storage to whatever we put in the console. Now, the kind of storage you need depends on how you're going to use it. If you have an extensive PlayStation 4 library and you'd like to take advantage of backwards compatibility to play those games on PlayStation 5, then a large external hard drive is ideal. You can leave your games on the hard drive and play them directly from there, thus saving the pricier SSD storage for your PlayStation 5 titles, or you can copy your active PlayStation 4 titles to the SSD. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles, though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. They can the moment. The Can't wait longer. Just like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage of the decompression, I.O. coprocessors, and all the other features I was talking about. Here's the catch, though. That commercial drive has to be at least oh, as fast so as ours. Any other Games room, I'm sorry. that rely on the speed of our SSD need to work flawlessly with any M2 drive. When I gave the Wired interview last year, I said that the PlayStation 5 SSD was faster than anything available on PC. At the time, commercial M2 drives used PCIe 3.0, and four lanes of that cap out at 3.5 gigabytes a second. In other words, no PCIe 3.0 drive can hit the required spec. M2 drives with PCIe 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting our in uh, samples. Yeah, please stop the spam, guys. Four or five gigabytes a second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support seven gigabytes a second. Having said that, we are comparing apples and oranges, though, because that commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller, and so on. For example, the NVMe specification lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. And that scheme is pretty nice, but it only has two true priority levels, 
our drive supports six. Yeah, some of you are late. Hook up a drive with only two priority but he's still steps, talking about some very specific stuff. The extra priority, just rather than the M2 drives flash control. Trying to sum and it so up. M2 no one really screens anymore. Extra speed to being super fast. Arising from the different approach. That commercial drive also needs to physically fit inside of the bay we created in PlayStation 5 for M2 drives. Unlike internal hard drives, there's unfortunately no standard for the height of an M2 drive. And some M2 drives have giant heat sinks. In fact, some of them even have their own fans. Right now, we're getting okay, no overheating as it seems. Benchmarking them in various ways. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation 5 launch at year end, we'll also be doing some compatibility testing to make sure that the architecture of particular M2 drives isn't too foreign for the games to handle. Once we've done that compatibility testing, we should be able to start letting I don't know what my which drives will physically Sorry. fit and which drive samples have benchmarked appropriately high in our test. Rogan Shire, thank you for it the $2 dollar donation. That happened by launch, but it's likely to be a, a <laughs> This bit guy sounds like my so ninth grade biology getting that bio, <laughs> bio teacher. Here You're me. so true. Okay, it's so true. Back to our principles. Balancing I just want to see the design. Evolution is the second of them. This was it's definitely like a recurring a text theme with the GPU. of being a so much we unnecessary stuff like GPU too long didn't read if, if we only have more performance it's not really a new generation of console of course many of these capabilities result in more performance that's part of why a playstation 5 teraflop is more powerful than a playstation 4 teraflop but we aren't just looking for the performance we also need the ability to do something with the gpu yeah that could same not i just want to before i want to see we the real interesting stuff Every time we double the performance of some GPU component, we don't want to find out we've doubled the power consumed and the heat produced. But at the same time, we have to make sure the GPU can run PS4 games, and we have to ensure that the architecture is easy for the developers to adopt. Now, backwards compatibility was handled masterfully by AMD. They treated it as a key need throughout the design process. As our solution to adding new features without blindsiding developers, we made sure that if there were new significant features, it would be optional to use them. The GPU supports ray tracing, but really you don't have still. to use ray tracing. Your Roblox Bros, thank you for the two pound donation. The GPU supports primitive shaders, but you can release your first game on PlayStation 5. Oh, Marius Baguette, also thank you for the donation. Before I get into the capability, I will definitely play on the PlayStation 5. I'd like 5. to make clear two points that can That's be a big quite promise. confusing. First, we have a custom AMD GPU based on their RDNA 2 technology. Ah, that what does one. That mean? Man, what does that AMD mean? AMD is continuously improving and revising their tech. For RDNA 2, their goals were, roughly speaking, to reduce power consumption by re-architecting well, the GPU. An old PlayStation block would have been enough for all those information. To optimize the GPU for performance. But now we're literally watching a teacher explain us what the heck is going on right now. Which is to say that we have a yeah, own it's also PlayStation, pretty boring. Into what the Still, I just want to get to see the freaking so PlayStation 5. Collaboration is born. If we bring concepts to AMD that are felt to be widely useful, aye, aye, aye. then they can be adopted into RDNA 2 and used broadly, including in PC GPUs. If the ideas are sufficiently specific to what we're trying to accomplish, like the GPU cache scrubbers I was talking about, then they end up being just for us. If you see a if they keep this up, this presentation, available this presentation PC thingy, PlayStation is gonna become the next console, big meme. That means our collaboration with AMD succeeded uh, in producing technology useful in both worlds. It doesn't mean that we as Sony simply incorporated the PC part into our console. You know, that's the difference this between them and Nintendo. AMD technology means it's dangerous. Because Nintendo to rely is on doing really entertaining stuff. Indicator of performance. And but this is just be avoided as well. some educational CPUs, presentation. This. The it's like watching someone doing a presentation at school. have eight CPUs, but we never think that meant the capabilities and performance like, are equal. What are you saying? Is getting into CPUs. this or one thing and outside this much or, larger or, over this time. year and outside this year? Features, Sorry, adding lots of transistors. In fact, uh, the transistor count for a PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. I can relate Bird Walker. One way you can achieve backwards compatibility That's is to put what we need to know. Finally! Console. Finally! You can play them old games. Why did my face can freeze again? 
A better way is to incorporate any differences. Playing PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. Of course, they need to play backwards compatibility chip. stuff Meaning because Xbox is doing the, the same thing. Evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 nice. and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely on is still available That's in backwards compatibility insane. mode. That's what a next-gen console should do. strategy is that once backwards compatibility is in the console, it's in. I mean, did we already in, made some kind of backwards compatibility, backwards compatibility little. like it did? A virtual console stuff, you know, Achieving we're able to play N64 games on the Nintendo Wii already. As I think Nintendo should go to this move as well, like going back to, logic. to the step. Running PS4 and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. The boost is truly massive this time around, and some game code... Yeah, just actually it's like that loops the Phantom 4. <laughs> ...on a title-by-title -title basis. Results are excellent. But stay human dedicated pros. I'm sure that there's PlayStation 4 more great stuff incoming. And we're I mean, backwards compatibility is already nice. Playable at launch on PlayStation 5. With regards to new features, as I said, our strategy was to try to break new ground, but at the same time not to require use of the new GPU capabilities. So we're talking about For the engines now. GPUs have imposed a restriction on game engines. Software I'm playing Sonic 06 on PS5. Watch me. No more loading screens, guys. For the triangles and other geometry that the vertices form. That That's actually what I'm asking myself. Does it mean no more loading screens for the old games as well? Such as that would be great. Processing and really helpful for Sonic 06. That uses it is off screen. PlayStation 5 has a, a new unit called it has Geometry, which brings handling of triangles and other primitives under full programmatic control. As a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were no more capable than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-faced or off-screen vertices and triangles. More complex usage involves something called primitive shaders, which allow the game to synthesize geometry on the fly as it's being rendered. It's a brand new capability. So Using primitive shaders looks on PlayStation even, 5 will beautiful. allow for a, a broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying level of detail, addition of procedural detail to close-up objects, and PlayStation 5 is going to look more realistic than real life itself, Another guys. Major new That's pretty much what they're trying to say. Based GPU is ray tracing, using the same strategy as AMD's upcoming PC GPUs. The CUs contain a new specialized unit called the intersection engine, which can calculate the intersection of rays with boxes and triangles. If I'm one of the centuries, you can engine, download you build and play the PS1 games on a console. It's data it would be weird if you couldn't play all of the PS1 games. games. There's a specific set of formats you can use. They're variations on the same BVH concept. Then, in your shader program, you use a new instruction that asks the intersection engine to check a ray against the BVH. While the intersection engine is processing the requested ray triangle or ray box intersections, the shaders are free to do other work. Having said that, the ray tracing instruction is pretty memory intensive, so it's a good mix with logic heavy code. There's of course no need to use ray tracing. PS4 graphics engines will run just fine on PlayStation 5. But it presents an opportunity for Should have made a reveal trailer like Nintendo did with Nintendo Switch. A Honestly. A second to have a big but yeah, Sony gang, that please rise up. Audio occlusion and because I'm still of calculations. With I'm still hyped for this. The GPU invested in ray it's not the coolest premiere, but I'm hyped. Very nice global illumination. Are people actually saying in their chat? Having said that, Adding ray traced shadows and reflections to a traditional graphics engine could easily take hundreds of millions of rays. I would second. rather watch and Jake Paul than someone say. Billions. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully Bruh. using ray tracing based reflections in complex animated scenes with only modest costs. Another set of issues for the GPU involved size and frequency. How big do we make the GPU and what frequency do we run it at? This is a balancing act. The chip has a cost, and there's a cost for whatever we use to supply that What chip is the cost for a PlayStation 5 itself? In general, I like running the GPU at higher frequency. Let me show you why. Here's two possible configurations for a GPU roughly of the level of the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is a thought experiment. Don't take these configurations too seriously. If you just Honestly, I don't care about this. You get I just want facts. Number. 
I just want to see it. Actually, the performance is noticeably different because teraflops is defined as the computational capability of the vector alien. Red Bull man was just just one part PS5. of the GPU. There are a lot of other units, and those other units all run faster when the GPU frequency is higher. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% faster. I just don't say. Demand body goes that much faster. Quick maths. The L2 and uh, other caches have that much. Oh higher yes. Bandwidth and so on. Lots of About options. The only that would be that system awesome. Is 33% further away in terms of cycles, but the Should larger number of five. Let's go. More than counterbalance that. As See, a I'm doing fantastic, says, but this a is tide putting me to sleep. Boats. Also, it's easier to fully use 36 CUs in parallel than it is to fully use 48 CUs. When triangles are small, it's much harder to fill all those CUs with useful work. So there's a lot to be said. A modern style, yeah, I agree. Assuming you can handle that the resulting be, power and that would be so issues, good. which, frankly, we haven't always done the best job at. Part of the reason for that is, historically, our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied on some heavy-duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside of the console. Power consumption varies a lot from game to game. When I play I'm God of War on the PS4 Pro, here. I know the power consumption is high just by the fan noise. But power isn't simply about engine quality. It's about the minutia of what's being should be like, hey, it's power. Corona time. It's Let's intuitive, but release the console right away. Consumes less power than processing no, Marty, man, it's geology, boring AF which is so far. I suspect why Horizon's map screen, with its low triangle count, makes my PS4 Pro heat up so much. Our process on previous consoles has been to try to guess what the maximum power consumption during the entire console lifetime might be, which is to say, the worst case scene in the worst case game, and prepare a cooling solution that we think will be quiet. Is at this that what power that feels level. like? If we get it right, yeah, Sunday 06 where our loading screens would be great. If we get it wrong, the console will be quite loud for the higher power games, and there's even a chance that it might overheat and shut down if we misestimate. Sell? Uh, thankfully, they never had this. PlayStation 5 is especially challenging because the CPU supports 256 bit native instructions that consume a lot of power. These are great here and there, but presumably only minimally used. Or are they? If we plan for major 256-bit instruction usage, we need to set the CPU clock substantially lower or noticeably increase the size of the power supply and fan. So after much discussion, we decided to go with a very different direction on PlayStation 5. We built a GPU with 36 CUs. Mind you, our DNA 2 CUs are large. Each this has 62% of more transistors than the CUs we were using on PlayStation 4. So if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA 2 CUs equates to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. It is a fairly sizable Someone needs to create a video with and only the hardest effects. variable frequency strategy for Sign PlayStation it up. 5, which is to say we continuously Thanks run we are watching this. and CPU in boost mode. We supply a generous amount of electrical power and then increase the frequency of GPU and CPU until they reach the capabilities of the system's cooling solution. How didn't these guys it's already fall asleep? Paradigm. Rather than running at constant frequency and letting power vary based <laughs> on the workload, we run at essentially constant power yeah, and sorry for that, guys. vary based on the workload. Sorry that I'm streaming this. We then tackle the engineering challenge of a cost-effective and high-performance cooling it. solution designed for that specific power. Like, I wish I, I could In hype way, this more up, but I can't. Problem because there are no I, more I just can't. There's no need to guess what power consumption the worst case game might Still have. Guys. Smash the like button. Good the for cooling me. Solution. I love you for that. We're forever. saving them for our teardown. I think you'll be quite happy with what the engineering team came up with. You so the how DXC. fast can we run the GPU oh, yeah. and CPU with this strategy? The simplest approach would be to look at the actual temperature of the silicon die and throttle the frequency on that basis. But that won't work. It fails to create a consistent PlayStation 5 experience. It wouldn't do to run a console slower simply because it was in a hot room. So rather than look at the actual temperature of the silicon die, we look at the activities that the GPU and CPU Am I the only one? and set the frequencies on that. It's basis, about to go which makes insane. Everything deterministic and repeatable. I have to, I have to, we're at it, we also I have to ask my girlfriend since she's, she's also reacting to this right now. Any unused power if she's also about to fall asleep, so we can second. squeeze out a few more pixels. 
The benefits of this, this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU at 2 gigahertz was looking like an unreachable target with the old fixed frequency strategy. With this Could you just allow this to show? Could you just allow this to show? In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 gigahertz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. 36 CUs at okay. 2.23 gigahertz. She's, she's sharing the same plus. opinion. And we expect the GPU to spend most of its time after. Did I, uh, by the way, did I miss out anything? No, probably no. Probably not. Similarly, running the CPU at 3 gigahertz was causing headaches with. You know, the meme of March 2020. Now it's not the it coronavirus, it's fucking Sony PlayStation with this presentation. Most of its time at that frequency. That doesn't mean all games will be running at 2.23 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz. When that worst case game Only the arrives, geekiest of tech freaks are now be like, oh it's shit! To reduce but the normal console gamer, like us, doesn't understand so one single fucking shit. To be pretty minor. All things considered, the change to a variable frequency approach will Truth guys, I'm spitting them facts. The final of our three principles was about Keeping finding well, new scoops of coffee already, so we can be more energized. Our team to find new ways so we are back to the very beginning again, uh, again with the with the dreams. Focus on 3D audio. As players, we experience the game through the visuals, through audio, and through the feedback we receive from the controller, such as rumble or haptics. <sighs> Personally, I feel a game is just dead without audio. Visuals are, of course, important, but the impact of audio is huge as well. At the same time, I was the audio team on a game sorry. project has to do a lot with a little. For example, on PlayStation 4, there's fierce competition for the Jaguar CPU cores. Audio typically ends up getting just a fraction of a core. That's not much of a computational resource, particularly when you consider that the visuals run at 30 or 60 frames a second, but audio processing needs to happen at almost... It's so times. fast. It's such a great console. So, it's been tough going making forward progress on audio with PlayStation 4, particularly when PlayStation 3 was such a beast when it came to audio. The oh, SPUs themselves were almost Do you remember for the audio PS3 language. was such a Simple beast. Simple pipeline algorithms could really take advantage of asynchronous DMA and frequently reach Demon 100% Sports, uh? utilization oh boy. of the floating point unit. There's unfortunately nothing comparable on PlayStation 4. Probably the most dramatic progress in the PlayStation 4 generation has been with virtual reality. The PSVR hardware has its own audio unit. It supports about 50 pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a Grove hint Street. as to where we oh. can go with audio, <laughs> as well as some valuable experience. GTA San Andreas here. Not to oversimplify, but here were our goals for audio on PlayStation 5. The first goal was great audio for everyone, not just VR users or soundbar What if you're deaf? Users. What if you're that deaf that you can't hear shit? Console, it couldn't be a peripheral. The second goal was to support hundreds of sound sources. We didn't want developers to have to pick and choose what sounds would get 3D effects and which wouldn't. We wanted every sound in the game to have dimensionality. And finally, we wanted to really you know take on... It sounds actually quite hard for all those developers to make all this stuff now, real. When we say you look bored, have some money. Thank you, Panther, for the $10 donation of your Super Chat. Much appreciated. And yes, I, a little bit. Could perfectly just achieve. a little bit. But the idea was that if we stopped using just a rain sound and instead used lots of 3D audio sources for raindrops hitting the ground at all sorts of locations around you, I mean, at some point it will help you definitely playing lead, some Battle Royale games or feeling, Call of Duty, this feeling whatever of shooter, presence inside the free dimensional surroundings. The capacity it's going to help a lot here. Of the game, That's cool. Just like music in a game does. The concept of locality is simpler. It's just your sense of where the audio is coming from. To the right of you, behind you. Yeah, I mean, understood that. You Would you please go down to the next step? Enhance the gameplay. It's like to use uh, dead space as an example. I know, old school. Please. You're fighting enemies in fairly dark, spooky locations. Back in the day, if you played the game using the TV, please give me a not a death space game. That would well, be it. You down, but it was difficult to tell quite where that enemy was. It was, but that made it actually that pretty spooky as well. Somewhere on the right, which lets you deduce, if you couldn't see it, that it must be somewhere behind and to your right. But with 3D audio with good locality, the idea is you know the enemy is precisely there, and you turn and you take it out. 
and you take it so out and you didn't you shit in your pants because from in it was there. You knew everything. Well, all those bumps and folds in the ear have a meaning, evolutionarily speaking. Based on what direction the sound is coming from, sound waves bounce around inside the ear, there's some constructive and how the hell it feels like? and the result is a change in volume. The phase of the sound yeah, also changes, speed depending gaming. on what path the sound wave took to reach the ear canal. These volume changes and phase shifts are different for each direction and also vary. Hey, this presentation makes me gonna buy an Xbox, all right? <laughs> head size and head shape also impact the sound in a similar fashion. The way that the sound changes based on direction tweet, no. and frequency can be encoded in a table called the Head Related Transfer Function, or HRTF. Here's part of one. The vertical axis is the frequency. The horizontal axis is the direction, front, back, left, right, and the color gives the degree of attenuation of the uh. sound at that frequency. The HRTF is as unique to an individual as a fingerprint is. In fact, you're looking at mine right now. Here's how we measure an HRTF. We've taken hundreds of people through this process. We put a microphone in the subject's left and right ear canals, and then sit the subject down in the middle of an array of 22 speakers. We then play an Tweet audio out, guys. from each speaker as we rotate the subject. In the course of 10 or 20 minutes, we're able to sample the HRTF at over 1,000. What? I don't give a fuck about those measure Using methods. Using an HRTF I'm get another Red Bull. creates unparalleled quality, but it's computationally expensive. The simplest way to use an HRTF is to process a sound source to make it appear as if it's coming from one of those thousand locations we sample. Unfortunately, the processing has to be done in frequency domain rather than time domain, so there's multiple fast Fourier transforms needed for every sound source for every audio tech. Blah, That's blah, a blah. Lot you see, of multiplies. If I'm going to fall asleep, I'm going to drink a lot of it. Factor for our strategy. It meant we had to bite the bullet and design and build a custom hardware unit for 3D audio. Collectively, we're referring to the hardware unit and the proprietary algorithms we run on it as. It's, it's literally it, bro. Audio tech. Playing the meaning it's, of 3D it's like that. audio and technology should be pretty obvious here. As for Tempest, I feel it really reflects our goals with audio. It suggests a certain intensity of experience and also hints at your presence within it. We're calling the hardware unit that we built the Tempest <sighs> engine. It's based on AMD's how many, GPU technology. How many likes does we this have? We modified a compute unit in such a way as to make it very How oh, does it have so many likes? I would actually give a dislike for this boring presentation. For no hate. No hate. So I love Sony. I love you, no Sony. Caches, just like but for real. All data access is via DMA. Just like a blog this. post would have been enough. Our target was that it would have more power okay, so than a CPU, calm down. thanks to the parallelism that a GPU can achieve, and that it would be more efficient than our GPU thanks to the SPU-like architecture. The goal Came for the excitement. is possible near 100% utilization Relatable. of the CU's vector units. Where we ended up is a unit with roughly the same SIMD power and bandwidth as all eight Jaguar cores in the PlayStation 4 Combined. It's still going, guys. If we guys. Really use the same algorithms as PSVR, that's enough Can you do me a favor like and smash a like button sound just for but of course, we want you to feeling use better? more complex algorithms, and we don't need anything like that number of sounds. <sighs> it would have been wonderful if a simpler strategy, such as using Dolby Atmos peripherals, could have achieved our goals, but we wanted 3D audio for all, not just those with licensed sound bars or the like. Also, we wanted many hundreds of sound sources, not just the 32 that Atmos supports. And finally, we wanted to be able to throw an overwhelming amount of processing yes, power at it, and it to wasn't clear this. what any peripheral might have inside of it. In fact, with the Tempest engine, we've even got enough power that we can allocate some to the games, to the extent that games want to make use of convolution reverb and other algorithms that are either computationally expensive or need high bandwidth. But the primary purpose of the Tempest engine remains 3D audio. Now, 3D audio is a major How can you actually talk so much about audio? No one in the world has all of the answers. And the set of algorithms <laughs> that we invented, tuned, or implemented to realize our vision for 3D audio How can someone is talk so much? For example, use of HRTFs in games is quite complex. Before, I talked about making a sound Dude, source made appear you as lose 400 people. Uh, from one of those thousand HRTF sample locations. But for high quality 3D game audio, we have to handle other possibilities. The sound source might not be at one of the thousand HRTF sample locations. So we have to blend the HRTF data from the closest locations that we have sampled. 
the sound source might be moving, which needs very special handling as that blend keeps changing and that can cause phase artifacts in the resulting audio. Or the sound source might have a size to it, meaning it should feel as if it's coming from an area. Oh, damn it, I unplugged my headphones. Oh, There's also I can hear the 3D audio. Oh, no. 3D audio can be implemented using individual processing of 3D sound sources. But alternatively, ambisonics can be used for 3D audio. Ambisonics being somewhat like the spherical harmonics used in computer graphics. And finally, there's audio devices. The player might be using headphones, like playing TV double speakers, the EXE again. have a higher end surround sound set up with six or more speakers, all of which need different approaches. Rah. That's a lot Rah. of options. It's nice to have the computational resources of the Tempest engine, but it's clear that achieving our ultimate goals with 3D audio is going to be a multi-year, step-by-step process. Having said that, headphone audio implementation is largely complete at this time. Uh, it was a natural yeah, place to start with headphones. We control exactly the player hears, and therefore the algorithmic development and implementation are more straightforward. For TV speakers and stereo speakers, we're in the process of implementing virtual surround sound. The Do idea being boys? that if you're sitting in a sweet spot in front of the TV, then the sound can be made to feel as if it's coming from any direction, <sighs> even behind. Virtual surround sound has a lot Almost killed myself. 3D audio. I literally audio. just but killed myself. It's more complex because the left ear can hear the right speaker and vice versa. We have a basic implementation of virtual surround sound up and running. We're now looking at increasing the size of that sweet spot, which is to say <sighs> making the area you need to be in to feel the 3D effect so larger. And we're also working to boost the sense of locality. Headphone audio is the current gold standard for 3D audio on PlayStation 5. Imagine, but we're going to see what we can do to bring to almost 1,000 people to and we drop down level, to 500. After which, we'll start in on setups with more speakers, such as six channel surround sound. It's now to the point where some of the PlayStation 5 games in development are extensively using these systems. One of the game demos allows you to toggle between conventional PlayStation 4 style stereo audio and our new 3D audio. I listened with just an ordinary pair of over-the-ear headphones, and wow, I could feel a difference. Wow. 3D audio has that dimensional feel to it. Conventional stereo audio feels smashed flat by comparison. The improvement is obvious. So, a big advancement, but have I entered the matrix? Does my brain believe I'm really there? Yeah, like probably does. Earlier when I explained our Why target. are you questioning so much, dude? Well, the answer is no. But you've probably caught on to what's missing here, namely whose HRTF was being used. It wasn't mine. It was the default HRTF. The audio team analyzed the hundreds that they measured and chose Ain't the one. Nobody has a fucking idea what this shit means. Audience. This shows a, a piece of the default HRTF on the left and my HRTF on the right. You can see that the general features are much the if same. I was there the details in a crowd sitting. I would just leave. With the default HRTF, as I said, the 3D audio sounds pretty great. When I use my HRTF, though, the audio reaches. This a guy's reading the terms and service in games that people say, never that read. When using <laughs> and my HRTF, it's funny because it sounds to be true. Even think a sound is coming from the real world when it's actually coming from the game. You know what? If they don't show this, the, corollary the design at least is going to be super HRTFs pissed. Are sufficiently far from the default HRTF, and the guy really loves to repeat himself. That they can toggle between PS4 style and PS5 style audio and not sense much difference. And I've had a few people describe the PlayStation 5 I'm not even listening to him anymore. Like a bit better stereo audio. Presumably, they're the ones at the very edge. Guys, please save time. me. Which means what HRTF you're using is key. I'd like everyone to be able to experience what I'm experiencing, but obviously it's not possible to measure the HRTF of every PlayStation user. That means HRTF selection and synthesis are going to be big topics going forward as the Tempest technology matures. At PlayStation 5 launch, we'll be offering a choice of five HRTFs. There's a, a simple test where you pick the one that gives you the best locality. That's Sony just the first step. Though. This is an open-ended science teachers topic. Maybe you'll be sending us a photo of your ear and we'll choose a neural network to pick the closest HRTF in our library. Maybe you'll be sending us a video of your ears and your head and we'll make a 3D model of them and synthesize the HRTF. Maybe you'll play an audio game to tune your HRTF. We'll be subtly changing it as you play and home in on the HRTF that gives you the highest score, meaning that it matches you the best. 
this is a, a journey we'll all be taking together over the I next mean, few course, years. I mean, of course, yeah, people were Ultimately, right. we're committing to enabling give this a chance. to experience that This is not a level. free like yeah. presentation, obviously. Hopefully, it's a presentation I've been able for developers. To a bit about our design and decision-making process today, and why PlayStation 5 has the feature set that it does. Now comes the fun part. We get to see how the development community takes advantage of that feature set. I'm hoping for the completely unexpected. Will it come from audio, ray tracing, Please the capabilities of the SSD, give us a bit or something else? I guess design we'll showcase at least, not the inner design. I just want to Thank see the looks of it. Your time. No, don't don't tell me that this is this is it. This is it. He's not showing it. Okay, people were right. They're not showing the design. It was really just about. The inner stuff, the the deeper meaning. Shit. Oh, look at that. My my stream is coming up next. The presentation for developers. Wow. That's a big bra moment. That is a big bra moment. I mean, yeah, obviously it's it's not a free presentation. What did we all expect? I don't know what we all expected. I'm sorry, guys. I... I failed you. I failed you as a person. I failed you so much. I hate myself. Bro. My donation goals get away. No more Japan trip. Rest in peace. Nani the fuck, guys. Nani. Well. As I said, if you are a developer or a technician freak, this probably would have been the best thing for you to watch. It would have been so... Wow! Insane! One hour of insights of the PlayStation, of audio... No loading screens, backwards compatibility. I can't even pronounce the fucking word. It is quite nice what they what they are working on and what they've planned, but all in all, this presentation wasn't for for YouTube, not for YouTubers. It's actually boring for us to watch on YouTube. This presentation is important for developers, for the technician freaks, but not for us. I don't think that we are that geeky. We were there for the games and for the design and to see a little bit of the performance they were doing. But they were giving us so much details and they were repeating themselves over and over. And this whole presentation took over an hour, almost an hour. Hi. For, um, pff, I don't know, pretty much. I don't want to even say something. I'm a huge Sony PlayStation fan. I'm definitely going to get the PlayStation 5. But I expect in the future to see even more. Sorry guys. That this was... That this stream was a bit... Boring compared to other streams. I'm, I'm really deeply sorry about that. I want to apologize for that. But if there is more coming from the PS5, then I'll make sure that I'm gonna let you know that I'm gonna report anything and everything I know about it here on YouTube, on my social media, anywhere possible. Just make sure to follow me on my social media. Twitter is, it is at ReLuigiKit or on Instagram, it's Rene underscore LuigiKit. Yeah, sadly, PS5 was, sorry. It was bleh. Further ado, over to you, Mark. The road to PS5. You, it could have showed us more. After style, either evolution in it's just temperature of the without. I'm there sad. <laughs> brain would take a but yeah, my dedicated gear boost. That thing was 100% legend this we have seen because people claim that this is fake. It wasn't fake. It's 100% true that we have seen here. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna get it whenever they're gonna. Give it to us. I thought they might give us a release date and the design as well. But no, we just have to wait a lot longer. When dedicated Rosenberg deaths, if I'm talking even more bull crap after 
this boring live stream. <laughs> Sorry again. Thank you, my dedicated bro, so much for watching. If you haven't already, a like is really much appreciated. So smash the like button. I'm gonna stream next time, I think, Five Nights at Sonics or Sonic 06. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, I could actually wait playing Sonic 06 because if we got a PS5, we won't have any loading screens. Oh yeah, patches. They're gonna install patches a lot faster than a PS4, which really sucks at PS4, at, on the PS4 when you... When there's an update for Rainbow Six, for example, or for Call of Duty, you have to wait like two hours before getting to action again. Well, my dedicated bros, brats, I love you. Stay awesome. And we see each other in the next video, which is coming up in exactly four hours. I love you guys. See you guys. Ciao.